Hey doctors, how are y'all doing today? My name is Maya and I'm a medical student in Cuba. And I can't believe the lies that I went for. Thought you was mine, but you decided to be with her though. Took my feelings and I threw them out the window. Feel like it's too hard to fall in love again though. On some nights like this, Shadi, I can't help but think of us. I've been reminiscing, sipping, missing ya. Can you tell me what's with all this distant love? If I call, would you pick it up? In today's video, I will be talking to you about my experience, my life as a pre med student at the Latin American School of Medicine, aka La Escuela Latinoamericana de Medicina, aka ALAM. So, a little bit of a backstory I arrived at ALAM on the 29th of January. Um, after being in quarantine for seven days at Victoria Giron, which is another medical school in Cuba. I got to the school, I got to my building, I chose my room and I settled in. I had about one month uh, before classes started, which was on the 1st of March, so I had about one month to settle into my new environment. So about a week or two before classes started, um, all new incoming students were given the opportunity to take a Spanish exam, a Spanish a proficiency exam in Spanish, which would give us the option to opt out of the six-month Spanish course because the whole year, the whole pre-med program is a year-long course. So it's six months Spanish and six months pre-med. But when I'm talking about my uh, pre-med experience, I mean the last six-month pre-med course, excluding the six-month Spanish course. So I took the exam, I got a five, uh, thankfully because I didn't see the point in taking Spanish, um, the six month Spanish course if I already knew fluent Spanish. So I passed and I was ready to start pre-med. So the pre-med subjects I had to take were Aprender, Aprender, which is learning to learn, which where you basically learn about the best, most efficient study techniques in order to help you through medical school. Química, chemistry, Biology, Biologia, Abren, no, wait, Matematica, Mathematics, um, Física, Physics, Geografía de la Salud, um, which translates to Health Geography, where you basically learn about the effects of certain geographical uh, occurrences, um, such as climate and like concepts such as land, population density, and how that affects the health of a population and Spanish. We still had to take Spanish, but it was like a more advanced um, subject. So I and my fellow classmates on the first day of class, on the first day of each class, had to take a diagnostic exam for each class because we had seven subjects and we only had three subjects per day, three classes per day. So for Aprender, Aprender, actually, we didn't have to take a diagnostic exam because that's a subject that's obligatory for everyone to take. So instead we took two tests. We took one test that told us what type of learner we are, uh, told each student what type of learner they are. And we also took a like a pattern recognition test that's supposed to like evaluate your intelligence, like your level of intelligence. Um, for the other subjects we took regular diagnostic exams and the point of these were to let the teacher know, let the professors know um, to what extent our knowledge on their subject reached. So if someone got either a four or five on the diagnostic exam, they were eligible to take a proficiency exam on that subject. Um, so for example, I took a proficiency exam uh, for math because I got a four in the diagnostic exam and in that other exam, I got a five, so I chose to not take math, like not attend the classes, and so my final grade was that five. If a person gets like maybe a three or a four, which are still passing grades, they could choose to like discard that score and stick with taking the subject and maybe getting higher grades, doing homework, assignments, um, other tests, and the final exam. Note that I didn't say 5 because 5 is the top score, it's an excellent score, so I wouldn't see why anyone would want to like discard that score and choose to take the class. Because regardless, 
even if one does get a five or a score they're happy with and they choose to exonerate a subject, they're still allowed to attend classes. You could even attend classes in other years, like first year classes, second year classes, just for personal educational purposes. So apart from taking diagnostic tests and proficiency exams, class monitors were also chosen for each subject. So for example, I was class monitor for Aprender, Aprender, uh, Química, Chemistry, and Math, before I exonerated Math. This could have been on the first day, which was the case for Aprender, Aprender, but it could have also been like a few days later or maybe a few weeks after. And the class representative was also chosen, which is me, and that was a few weeks after like we got to know each other, my fellow classmates and I. And the uh, professor guía was designated to each student, or well, each student was designated a professor guía or a guiding professor that was basically responsible for that student and everything they did on campus. Overall, I feel like the first day of school was the way it is in most places where you don't really do much learning-wise. One thing I liked about pre-med was that it was easy. It was just basic high school content because the goal of it is to get all the students um, on a level playing field for medical school, to prepare them for medical school because there are students that arrive at Alam with the intention of studying medicine but maybe they haven't taken medical related subjects like maybe they didn't take biology in high school or maybe they didn't take chemistry or physics uh, for example i didn't take physics in my last two years of high school and personally i feel like pre-med was easier than high school personally i did ib and i feel like ib was so much harder than pre-med maybe because the subjects in pre-med, the content is narrowed down to medicine, just the topics related to medicine. Whereas, for example, in IB, I had to take chemistry, but topics that were both related to medicine and that were also related to engineering, for example, because it's just high school, they're not focusing on the field you want to go into specifically. So I feel like it was easy, but um, a lot of students at Elam struggle with pre-med, not because the content is hard, but because of Spanish. The fact that most students come from non-Hispanic countries or non-Spanish speaking countries, they find it harder to learn in pre-med. But the content in itself, the syllabus, the subjects, the topics, they're pretty easy. Another thing I liked about pre-med and like their mantra is that they don't necessarily just focus on academics. They want you to do things outside of school. They want you to play sports. They want you to sing, dance, play the guitar, play whatever other instruments. Um, I don't know, like save the environment. They want you to contribute to, to campus life. I did a lot of things even before I realized this because I realized this towards the end of the six months, maybe like maybe four, three months in. I was doing a lot of things just because I enjoyed them. I played sports, I played football and volleyball every every single day. I participated in sports competitions, I participated in a dance competition. I was in Echo Alam, which is like an environmental group at school, although I didn't do much. I did research. I submitted three research projects, three investigations to the annual science conference at school. I went to every single party at school. Like I was busy, but at the same time, I had time to have fun. And so I, I enjoyed myself. And the professors and the school generally like encourages that. And towards the end of the course, your guiding professor does ask you what things you do outside of school, outside of academics. And the more stuff you do, the better it is for your academic folder. Another thing about pre-med is that they encourage teamwork. The professors encourage teamwork. So strong students in my class, for example, were always given the responsibility to help or guide the weaker students. 
that is outside of school and outside of class hours. Um, so like tutor them, give them like homework sometimes. And when professors assign group work, they would generally do it in the way where each group would have one to two strong students that would guide the rest of the students because about half of my class was not doing very well. And that was, like I said, because of Spanish. So there was one to two students in each group that was supposed to guide the whole group through the project. And if maybe a weak student or anyone in the group didn't understand the project or didn't want to do the work, then the whole group would basically go down. Even if the project was good, maybe they did a good job, the whole group would like get a lower score than they deserved because of that one student. But it was okay, I guess. They did it with good intentions. So towards the end of the course, um, each student was meant to meet up with their guiding professor in order to tell them what activities they participated in, what events, what positions they had, both academic and non-academic, and other things like that, so that their guiding professor would write a report on them that would go into their academic folder slash resume, which they will give us when we graduate from medical school. Apart from that, we also had to prepare for exams or final exams. We took exams in biology, chemistry, and Spanish too. So we didn't have to take final exams in all the subjects, just those three. And I was kind of anxious about the biology exam because that was the last exam we had, if I'm not mistaken. And there was a cyclone that was supposed to be coming up on the day of the exam, but it kept slowing down. So they kept postponing our biology exam, which pissed me off. And in the end, the cyclone didn't even touch campus, so yeah. And on the last day of our exams, we were let free. We were allowed to leave campus because we had been in lockdown since January till freaking July because of COVID. Yeah, so after exams ended, we were allowed to leave school. Um, Rome and explore in Havana, in Baracoa, which is where Alam is. And I had like three months to explore because since I didn't have to take Spanish, I have a six month vacation now. Well, now like three months, I have three months left for school to start. And yeah, I had a lot of time to explore. So that's that. That is my pre-med experience. That is my experience doing pre-med at Alam in Havana, Cuba. I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned to the next video titled Learning Spanish at Alam, where my friends uh, who are current pre-med students at Alam tell you about their experience during the six month Spanish course. Because since I didn't do the Spanish course, I can't give you guys my perspective on that. So I feel, I, I want, my goal with this channel is to inform you guys about life at Alam, academic and, you know, other stuff at Alam and in Cuba um, as a student. So I feel like it's alright for me to give my perspective as someone who didn't go through the six month Spanish course. So I want to make that video and I will upload it next week so that you guys really see what it's like for actual non-Spanish, non-Hispanic people. Yeah. So I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video for anyone who is going to study in Cuba, is going to do pre-med, or is just, is maybe is already there or knows someone who is going to Cuba so that they learn a little bit about the school, learn a little bit about student life in Cuba. Comment below any video suggestions you may have, what types of videos you want me to make for you, um, and maybe, you know, constructive criticism. I accept it because I just, my goal is to make this channel for you, for educational purposes, so you know what you're getting into when you go to Cuba. So, yeah, until next time. Bye.